Alright, hello everybody, it is Jeff again, and I'm coming to you with something different today. Still Minecraft, but a different version of Minecraft. I decided that spreading knowledge is a good thing, and I spent some time in a creative world building something so I can have some fun teaching. So, hopefully you guys will enjoy, but right now you're getting ready to learn with Jeff the Minecraft way. So first off, let's go into my creative world here. We called it The Learning Channel. So no, this is not a video about learning Minecraft. This is a completely different kind of video. As you guys know from the one of the last videos I did, not the last video, but I was discussing the heart and CPR and things like that, and I figured it'd be a fun thing to talk to you guys about the heart and get some things more explained. Now this is a basic version of your heart here. And as you can see, the these on the bottom, these two little areas are sticking out, and that's to signify that the heart is divided into four chambers. You got your atrias and your ventricles. When you're looking at the heart, this is actually the right side of the heart, even though it's on the left, because I'm pretending this is in the chest. So if I looked like this, it would be in my chest. So let's watch how it works. I discussed this a little bit last time. If I flip this switch, I made it so ooh, let me stay out of the uh, the area where. You can hear my pistons going. So as you can see, there's two different areas that are kind of going together, and there's two different areas down here that are going together, yet opposite the other areas. Now, that's not exactly the right timing, but it's the best I could come up with here. But basically, you got your, your atrias firing, and then your ventricles firing, and that kind of repeats on the other side of the heart. Now, let's get a little bit more in-depth in this. And, and you know, apparently, you got some bats in your body, too. They like to fly around the bottom. Um, so if we stop this for a minute, and that's the basic way the heart works for those who didn't know. There's four different kind of beats that go on, even though the atrias kind of fire together and the ventricles kind of fire together too. They're doing completely different functions, and I'll show you how blood... God, there's a lot of bats out here. Let's, uh, whoops, let's do a time set day to make this a little bit easier here. So now that we're in the daytime, even though these bats are still going to be here, let's turn around and take a look at this. Well, this is a big complicated contraption here, as you can see. There's a lot of pieces to it, and it looks kind of confusing. It is a heart, but as opposed to just showing you how the, the atria and ventricles fire, it's going to show you actually how blood travels through your body, and I'm going to walk you through that step by step. I'm going to turn this little switch on, give it a minute to prime the pump. Hence why you need a lot of compressions to start things going, and there we go. I've got a red stream, a redstone stream showing you how blood travels through the heart. Now it's confusing to look at for a minute, but let's start from the beginning here. And what you got here is this is your vena cava. Your vena cava is actually, there's an, a superior and an inferior vena cava. Superior meaning coming from the top of the body, inferior meaning, com, meaning coming from the bottom of the body. They actually merge into the vena cava, which is what feeds, this is the right atria of the heart. The first place blood hits your heart. Now you'll notice Got a bunch of blue and a bunch of red. This red outline is just signifying the heart itself. The blue in the middle, however, is signifying unoxygenated blood. When blood first gets to the heart, in theory, it's unoxygenated. Now, it does have some oxygen, just not enough to really feed the body, but either way, we're going to pretend it's blood that doesn't have any oxygen in it because the body, the body's used it all and then sent it back to the heart. So it comes back into the heart, and as you can see, it's coming in this way and going down, going boop, 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 down here into the heart through this atria, and it stops at this little hopper conjunction. And in order for it to pass from the atria to the ventricle, because as you saw over there, let me turn this back on because it won't really lag anything, and we can reference it back again. As you saw over here, even though you just see a bunch of pistons because of the distance I'm at, but you see that they fire at different times so that they can't, it doesn't enter all of it at once because they're two separate entities going on right here. So come on over here and you'll see, hold on. Very loud around here, so I wanted to make sure it wasn't too distracting in the video. But as you'll see, blood's trickling down into here and it goes to this hopper junction. This hopper junction is the connection between the right-sided atria and ventricle. And there's three hoppers here, and that's because this is what's called the tricuspid valve. There's actually three, quote-unquote, cusps that hold the blood back. So 
This is the tricuspid valve, hence there's three hoppers, and blood kind of pours through these areas. That makes it down to the ventricle, and it goes wee down to the bottom of the heart. Now, even though the heart is one item, it doesn't go straight from this part of the heart to this part of the heart. It doesn't do that. It actually comes out the back side here on this. Once it gets to the bottom, it comes through here and goes out this path. Where's it go to? Well, let's take a look. Not the greatest Minecraft imaging of it, but this is supposed to be the lungs, and I'm signifying that by showing that it's O2. The lungs, you breathe, and that's where you get oxygen. O2 is the symbol for oxygen. Well, technically O is the symbol for oxygen, but O is unstable all by itself, so O2 is a stable compound and what we breathe and use as our oxygen source. And you'll notice kind of here that you got all these blue paths. The blue path here goes into the heart. This blue path goes down. This blue path goes this way as opposed to these red paths that go the other direction now or this red path goes the other direction and this one goes here it's kind of weird because a lot of people think that veins are something that carry unoxygenated blood and ventricle or excuse me and um arteries are something that carry oxygenated blood this is incorrect it's almost true but there's one exception to those rules so therefore what you want to remember is that veins are something that goes away from the heart. Or excuse me, that goes into the heart. Arteries are something that go out of the heart. So veins go into the heart. Arteries go out of the heart. And the reason that's important is because this blue thing right here, this is an artery. It is the pulmonary artery. And even though it's called an artery, it is carrying unoxygenated blood. It's the only artery in the body that does that but it's because it's carrying oxygen out of the heart, out of the right ventricle, only only halfway through its heart cycle, over here to the lungs. So it brings this unoxygenated blood over here to the lungs. And I don't have any pictures of how the lungs work because that's not what this video is about. But out of the lungs comes oxygenated blood. Now this is the only exception on the vein side. This is actually the pulmonary vein because it goes back into the heart. As you can see over here, it goes bloop right here into this part of the heart. And though it is a vein, it's carrying oxygenated blood because the oxygen just got added to the blood in the lungs. But it is going into the heart, so as you'll see, as you can see, the pulmonary vein is carrying this oxygenated blood, and it's the only vein that does that. It's the only vein that carries oxygenated blood, but it's carrying the oxygenated blood back into the heart, into the left atria. So this is the left atria here, even though, like I said before, it looks like it's on the right side when you're looking at it, but you're talking about it from the perspective of the patient that you're dealing with. So this is the patient's left atria. So the left atria gets the blood, starts up here, as you can see, it goes boop, 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 down here into another similar type of hopper conjunction. But this time it's the bicuspid or mitral valve. I don't know why they got it in two different names for it, but it's really known as the mitral valve, but it can also be called the bicuspid valve, and that's because it's just got two cusps, hence why there's only two hoppers here. So these two cusps are powerful enough to hold back all this oxygenated blood and before it lets it in here into the left ventricle, which this left ventricle is the powerhouse of your heart. Whenever things happen to your heart that makes your uh, that makes you have like really bad uh, perfusion, or you go into ventricle fibrillation or ventricle tachycardia or anything like that, it has to do with this left ventricle because this is the spot that beats and actually forces blood out into the body that has oxygen in it, and this is the aorta that it's coming out of. So. The aorta actually sits near the top. It's like a big valve that goes whoop and kind of comes out the top. But just for picture's sake and making it easy to understand, here's the aorta here after the left ventricle. And as you can see, it's pumping this blood out of the heart. So a heart doesn't really look like this in real life, but it is the common idea of what a heart is. So therefore, I just drew it like this, or I made it like this in order to give you guys a better idea. Let's uh, set time tonight, though. So. 
There we go. So now it's darker. Now you can watch these paths a little bit closer. So as you can see up here, blood coming into the heart, trickling down here into the from the right atria down into the tricuspid valve, from the tricuspid valve down to the right ventricle, from the right ventricle it actually comes out this blue path back here into the pulmonary artery. Again, the only artery in the body that does not carry oxygenated blood, it carries unoxygenated blood. This takes it to the lungs where it actually the blood gets filled up with oxygen. The pulmonary vein comes up from the lungs and dumps the oxygenated blood back into the heart and it dumps it into the left atria. Left atria goes through the mitral slash bicuspid valve right there down to the left ventricle and then out the aorta into the rest of the body. So if anybody ever asks you how blood travels through your body, this is exactly how it's done and done in the Minecraft way. Hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching.